How are you feeling? Your community's coming home today. Yes, I'm, I'm, ec I'm ecstatic. We were able to, you know, find out that the imminent threat is, uh, has been significantly reduced and all our community infrastructure is in place. Uh, critical services are in place. And so it's time to come home. So three hours from now, people can start returning home. How exactly is it going to work? Is it, for example, is everybody allowed to return home, Air Fraser? Everybody is allowed to return home, adults, children, uh, everybody who can start making their way home. And so we, we're not doing it in a phased approach to bring people home. We're, we're, we're uh, opening the gates. And yesterday when I spoke to uh, everybody, we asked them to take their time, uh, stagger themselves. Uh, some people might even want to wait an extra day, you know, because there will be a rush on the Alaska Highway, but it's 400 kilometers long. So we're pretty sure that they'll be able to space themselves out and do it in a safe manner. And what do you expect? I mean, what are, what are you hearing from people in terms of their desire to be back home? Uh, there's a huge desire to be home. Of course, people want to check on their properties. That's the first thing. And then, then they'll be looking uh, for recovery. So we'll go into a recovery stage soon. Uh, the fire is still burning out there, so we're still uh, we're still resourcing the fire. But people will be able to look after their homes. They'll be able to come to the resiliency center and get the cleanup kits that the Red Cross has provided, and uh, we'll be able to start moving on. You mentioned you have everything in place, all of the emergency supports, the community supports that they need. Those are all there and ready to go for them. But what else? What have you been telling the the residents themselves in terms of what they need to know, what they need to bring as they get set to return today? Yeah, we've asked them to bring any uh, essential goods that they might need because the, the, the volumes in town are low. Uh, the, the, the stores are open, but they're not fully stocked. And so we're asking people to make sure they've got uh, fuel in their vehicle. When they get here, they'll be able to gas up. We're, we're asking them that they've got uh, sufficient food uh, to bring some extra cleaning uh, materials with them because they're going to have to be cleaning out their homes. And, uh, and our resiliency center is open. When they come home, as you mentioned, they're anxious to check out their properties. What are they going to see in terms of uh, what has changed and what has been damaged, what has been lost in the community, Mayor Fraser? People in town won't see a lot of uh, a lot of change. There was uh, there was one cut that fire cut that was made right on the edge of town at the north end, so those folks will see that. But out in the rural areas, they're going to see a lot of damage, particularly out on the edges of community to the north. Uh, the, the fire burned right up to the highway, so it's blackened trees. Uh, there's gonna be some places they're not gonna be able to go where they used to be able to go, like the Parker Lake uh, uh, recreation area is, is blocked off just because of so many danger trees across the road. So there is some significant damage to the, to the north and west of the community. Um, you know, that's going to make them feel sad. And, and for sure. And in terms of the, the final number of properties lost and, and damaged, where did you land? We landed at 11 properties damaged, four homes, three of them were occupied. So, and those are, uh, and those property owners, they know. You've already had that difficult conversation with them, have you? Yeah, I had a difficult conversation uh, with just about all the property owners. Some of the ones that had uh, only vehicle damage or, or had lost a shed, I didn't get directly in touch with them, but, my, but our staff did. What has the experience of this been like for you, Mayor Fraser? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a roller coaster, I'll tell you, Will. You know, we, we, we get ahead of this fire and then the wind comes up and it got closer to the community. And... Yeah, we had some rain and then it got dry in a few days and it flared up again. It's just it's just been a roller coaster. But, you know, I've been surrounded by a by a professional group of volunteers and, and our staff that uh, that have really been able to buoy me up and, and keep me informed about what's happening. Well, you've certainly been uh, helpful to us as we've tried to cover this as well as we can. Um, don't take this the wrong way, sir, but I hope this is the last time during the wildfire season that we speak, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You're probably I hoping exactly for the same thing. <laughs> but, I know exactly what you mean, and I agree. It's, it's going to be a long summer. Well, I, want, I don't know that it is going to be the last time we speak. You're still on evacuation alert, we should make very clear at this point. What is the status as we speak today? Well, the Parker Lake fire is, is still burning. It's mostly burning itself out, but it is still burning. And with a big wind event, you know, it, it, it could potentially break 
break over its borders. And just to the north of us, of course, we've got that Patrick fire, which is a huge fire that is the same. It's, the edges are not getting any bigger. It's burning on itself and the wildfire service is doing everything they can. But if we get some dry weather and some wind, we're back in the same position as we were before. So we are going to get the community together. We're gonna to talk about their experiences. We're gonna reinforce our evacuation plans and we're going to uh, really have a go at our, uh, our wildfire resiliency plan and see what we can do to bolster that before that happens again. We're not even to the end of May, so you're right. There's a lot of summer ahead. Uh, are you expecting a day of high emotion in Fort Nelson? Yes, Yeah. very high emotion. As, as people reunite with the folks who stayed and the volunteers and firefighters who helped fight this fire locally, there's going to be a, a lot of family reunions happening this morning and this afternoon. I was thinking that. Listen, I appreciate all of our conversations through all of this. Enjoy, at least for now, hopefully for a long time, but enjoy everybody coming home to your town. Thanks a lot, Mayor. Thank you, Heather.